Stand your ground and say, uh, committed. Verse number 18, he says, but if not, be it known to thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image of thou hast set up. It's important for us to understand that when we trust God to do this, that, and the other, when he's proclaimed to us in our mind, our spirit, um, that if we walk in this certain light, this certain line, we walk this certain parameter with him, that he'll pour out these kinds of blessings. But he never gives us the he never gives us the specific time when those blessings come. Um, so we have to be okay that if God doesn't do it now, I'm, he's still my God. If God doesn't bless me now, he's still my God. So Shadrach and Meshach said, if he don't pull us out, we burn up, we're consumed. He's still God. It doesn't make a difference what he allowed to happen. He is still God. You can't change him from being God because he allowed us to be consumed by uh, the fire. Uh, we have to stop uh, uh, compromising our integrity to fit in other folks' dreams. King Nebuchadnezzar had an idea, had a thought um, that he create, could create something that people would idolize and worship. Uh, but that was his dream. That's not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's dream. Um, that's not Daniel's dream. That's not the other Hebrews uh, that worship God's dream. That's his dream. So we have to get out of, out of other people's shadows and do what God has called us to do. And it does not mean that we can't uh, uh, adore one another. It does not mean that we can't respect one another. It does not mean we can't take advice from one another. But if your dream goes against what God has said, uh, for me that not to do, then that's your nightmare. It is not my dream. So we have to stop compromising. Uh, not, only, not only your integrity, but your morals, your beliefs, your, your, your body, your mind, your spirit. Stop compromising that to satisfy uh, the desires of somebody that tomorrow they won't even be in court. Because they'll be just like the wind. They'll blow right on away. But we gotta be like the emperor. No matter how hard the wind blows, the mountain never moves. The mountain never moves. The Bible said that they put Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in the furnace. Now, what happens when you put the people of God like, in that kind of trouble? I do recall the Bible says, "Touch not thy anointed and do my prophet no harm." So you now subject yourself to the same punishment that you were trying to do to my people. Um, so we have to make sure that whenever we're walking in the fullness of God, um, that we don't do anything to disrupt the spirit of God, trying to get back at folks that don't know that we serve God. You are the walking anointing to the soul because the words of God live in you. They're engrafted in your heart. And God knows when to step in. God knows when you got to the end of your rope. The Bible said that he shall not put no more on you than there. God knows when you're about to throw in your towel and that you created, but something strange happened. The Bible said that he looked in through the window, and when he looked in, he pondered in his mind, scratched his head, and put his hands on his side, and struck his shoulders, and said, wait a minute now. I know I put three in there, but it looks like a fourth person in there, and the fourth person looks like the Son of God. And what I'm trying to tell you is that if you stand your ground, if you stay committed to whatever God has called you to, whenever the enemy tries to put you into trouble, the enemy's angels have to say, now wait a minute, now I know I was just dealing with Gwen, but when I put Gwen in that terrible, tough situation, I see somebody that looks familiar to me. Now I know that I was dealing with Pastor Nate, and when I put her in the predicament that was going to change her mind, I see somebody that looks familiar to me. Now, I know that I was dealing with Samuel, but when I put Samuel in the position that was awkward, I see somebody standing next to Samuel that looks familiar to me. I know that I put Mariel in an uncomfortable position, but when I see Mariel, I see somebody standing next to Mariel that looks like somebody that I'm familiar with. I know that I put Mama Vicky in a heartbreaking situation, but when I see her, I see somebody looking at her that looks like the Son of God. He said, wait a minute, I must have done something that I was not supposed to do. He cried out, he said, come on out of that shack back, me shack. And the vinegar, when they came out, when they came out, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, took a look. He says, now, now I know 
Then I saw two men that I sent with them to put them in there. And they got consumed instantly. So I know it's not an issue with the fire. I know it ain't no issue with the fire, Mom, because I saw two of my men get destroyed by the same fire. I know it's not an issue with the door, because when I put the three in there, I closed the door and I was able to stand by the door and look in. So it's not an issue with holding heat in. I know I can count, because I know there were three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that I stuck in there, but I cannot figure out how that other fella got inside of the fiery furnace. What he did not understand is that when he put me in, because Jesus is in me, that he put Jesus in. And whenever he puts me in the situation, he puts Jesus in the situation. And I understand that I serve a God that's never lost a war, he's never lost a patient, he's never lost a battle, and he will not uh, be defeated by something that is beneath him. The Bible said that the Lord gave Jesus a name that was above all names. So at the name of Jesus, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego went in with three. But there was actually one more in him, and it was the man. He opened the door. He said, come on out. <laughs> Let me take a look at you. Because these are my, my lying eyes are deceiving me. <laughs> or somebody is playing with me. So when he came out, the Bible said in verse number, hmm, verse number 27, he says, and the prince of the governors and the captain of the king council being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Hmm. Nor was a hair on their head sin. Neither were their coats nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Yesterday we were cooking outside. When we went inside, we smelled like smoke. <laughs> so it doesn't take a lot of smoke for us to smell like smoke. Now imagine what God has done for these three boys that didn't even, even smell like smoke. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not amazed by the fire. The fire didn't touch it. Maybe they had on a nice coat and it was fireproof. They didn't even smell like smoke because that's how God does. That's how God is. And then watch this. When you stand your ground, when you say from it, the folks that never knew that they wanted to have a relationship with God, not because they experience the power of God, not because they experience how it is whenever you have a relationship with God, 